Hello, how are you? Welcome to See You All, where we promote empowering information about Africa and Africans. In this season of coronavirus, COVID-19, it will be em promoting empowering information about the world, about the human race, because through coronavirus, we are all one. Now, traveling in the era of coronavirus. For some of my followers on my channel who know and friends who know, I share regions, two regions in my family. I am African, born in Africa, raised in Africa. I'm African, born in Africa, raised in Africa. But my family, my ch child, my son is a Canadian. The father is a Canadian. So he shares two nationality. But I have raised him since he was six for most of his life, actually for at least 95% of his life in Africa. And he's been very supportive. He's allowed his mom to take him through different countries in, in Africa as I do my work in uplifting and promoting Africa. But as corona coronavirus arrived, he's, I was hoping, you know, he would stay with me in Africa, but I recognized that he had rights to family rights, just as I did, to be in his country as this you know, pandemic continued to challenge the human race. I was contemplating this for three weeks. Then tentatively checked in my favorite airline, Ethiopian Airlines, checked their apps and found out that my date of intended departure from Addis Ababa to bring my son to Canada, there were no flights available. I checked the next day, no flight, two weeks, no flight available. I checked and I was panicking and, real, and decided to check on the morning, a check on the same day I was checking it. I was doing this around 6 a.m. and I'm, I'm an early riser. So I was doing this on a Friday morning. Then checked on a Friday morning, the same day. I think 28 or 27 Friday morning and there was a flight it was going to be the last flight until further notice from Ethiopia from Addis Ababa to Canada Toronto I dashed out <laughs> it was not me contemplating anymore went to the travel agent and just by luck was able to get two tickets no return just one way and a one-way ticket was more expensive than any return ticket I've ever bought. Bought two tickets, came back home, packed with my son, and dashed off. Now, this is what I experienced traveling in the era of coronavirus. <laughs> yes, there was distancing. We all had a mask, but there was distancing. But there was a look across. In the lineup, in the check-in section, in the migration, there was a kind look in kindness that we shared. Africans, Chinese, Euro Europeans, we all looked at each other in kindness. I've been traveling all my life. This time we were all one. Yes, there was a distance. We all looked at each other with a mask over our nose and our mouth, but in our eyes we looked at each other with, with, with care as one. And that kind of touched me. Yes, we got in the plane. Yes, in the era of social distancing, we had to fly. <laughs> we had to sit close to each other. Even in, in, in economy, in business, we all sat close to each other. The flight was packed because everybody who could get out, move, wanted to. Now, understand this. Canada and the United States, where most of the passengers were flying to, had a worst case of coronavirus. Ethiopia is one of the countries that is least affected so far by coronavirus. And I think it will stay the same. But people were still moving. And the people moving were not just Europeans or Canadians. They were Ethiopian Canadians, Somali Canadians, Nigerian Canadians, <laughs> and four Canadians like my son. But we were moving to Canada. And we were not because we didn't believe in Africa, because our families were dispersed. These, every, most people I sat with by my side was a, was a, a, a Somali mother and the husband, who are Canadians as well. They are going back to Ottawa because they have four of their kids there. It's like, I want to be where my children, where my family is. 
So that's the reason. So we were moving. We got to Canada. 60% of, the, of, of the, the passengers on the flight were going over to the States. They were, Can they were Americans, Washington and all. Coming in, usually you would, the priority is to make sure you're not coming to Canada illegally or wear your papers. No, this time it wasn't about that. It was about giving you instructions as an arrival, as a passenger arriving in Canada, recognizing your, the potential that you might bring in coronavirus. It was now a disease, a situation we couldn't control. We could only control it by ensuring you comply to some rules in terms of distancing. I found that interesting. It just, I find hope in that. So there's something beyond the Western concern about illegal immigrants, illegal migrants. Suddenly, that which we fear might come in illegally, could come in through legal migrants, could come in through Canadians. So coronavirus is illegal, but it attaches itself to legal status, to legal entities to come into a country. So you cannot separate it from the entities. You can't do that by social distancing. And we were instructed, my son and I, not to be in contact with, not to have any social engagement, not to be in contact with others, to limit it for 14 days. My home is not in Toronto. I have a property for my son, my son, in Ottawa. But there were no flights I could get to Ottawa. So I have to stay in Toronto for 14 days before I get to Ottawa. I had to stay in a hotel. Quite expensive hotel downtown. A hotel where the restaurant has closed down to support the life-saving measure of stopping social gathering in time of coronavirus. But they provide very expensive meal. So very expensive ticket. I'm paying close to about two, a very expensive daily rate to quarantine myself and my son. It's our contribution to humanity. Because bottom line, no matter how much I want to save, what's the point in saving it if the world might be disseminated by coronavirus? So I am expanding my resources, digging in here and there to pay a very expensive hotel bill to, to actually, I, don't, I can't cook in my hotel room, so I buy the hotel at least. Why they don't run the restaurant anymore? Cook, then you can in a distance Buy your food from a distance, take to your room and eat and drop it. This is what it means to travel in an era of coronavirus, to stay in a hotel in the era of coronavirus. It costs a lot, but it's worth every penny. We must all contribute at most, at most, our ultimate, how much we can contribute. To, con to restrain, contain this virus. And we can do it by distancing. But what I've learned is through that social physical distance, we can, still ex we can still stay united virtually in many ways as one human race that will win this battle. Thank you.